I'm not trying to get Marissa back. She got a court order for full custody of AJ until we settle this. It completely blindsided me. Why, why on earth would she feel the need to do something like that? You're on her side, aren't you? No, I'm not on anybody's side. I'm just concerned about AJ. You know, sometimes you have to choose. No, JR, sometimes you gotta stand back and look what's staring you square in the face. You're in trouble. That woman, I don't know what happened, but she loves you. She cares about you. If there's even a single chance of you uh, of saving your marriage, no, you it's over. It. It's over, trust me. Because of Annie, isn't it? You did it again. It caused a chain reaction. Marissa is on a war path. Scott and Annie, they're done. And when he realized his marriage had blown up, he admitted to stealing from Palmer. Choir boy's idea of redemption, I guess. It's either that or he's trying to take down Chandler to get back at me. Huh. Well... At least you and Annie aren't on the front page of the paper. I guess that's something to be grateful for. Were you some kind of an item? No. Too busy battling for my son and saving this company. Battling. Sure. <sighs> Nobody knows how much it hurts to lose a child more than me. It's a kick in the gut, but right now... Maybe battling isn't your best choice. Well, what am I supposed to do, roll over? No. But your mother and I did a fair amount of battling ourselves. You remember what that felt like? Marissa took my son from me. Yeah. Maybe. For now. Just for now. But you gotta stop. You gotta think. You know, she's... At least in the interim... Your son is going to be well taken care of. He's going to be okay. He's going to be loved. But whatever else she is, Marissa isn't vindictive. She's not out for vengeance. She's not out to, to punish J.R. Chandler. She's simply trying to protect A.J. He doesn't need protecting, not from his own father. Well, if that's the case, then prove it. Prove it to her. And yourself. Instead of chasing her out of here, screaming about revenge or whatever the hell I walked in on. Prove to her she's got nothing to worry about. Let her know that no matter what, you love AJ enough to work out some kind of peaceful, amicable arrangement for raising him together. Is this what you tell me for the 15th time that I'm acting just like my father? I shouldn't have to. You're not your father, and you don't have to be. Remember that. As much as I'd like to stay for this lecture, I have a court order to overturn and a company to save. Does Greenlee have some kind of plan to make sure that I'm not implicated in David's murder? No. No, why would you even think that? Well, because you were just freaking out and you just said something about both of us keeping secrets. <sighs> because I'm just... I don't know. I, I have no idea what to say lately. I just don't want to see another friend of mine get arrested. Plus, I have to go in there and testify, too. So, excuse me if I'm sick and tired of watching every single word that comes out of my mouth. It's not exactly my best event. There's something more here. You want to know what I'm really upset about? And what more there is to this? My marriage. It's probably falling apart if it hasn't already because of all the secrets that I've kept from my husband. And that's it. Isn't that enough? My God, Ryan, the only two people in this world who love each other as much as Zach and I do and screw it up even more are you and that defendant in there. And I don't want to hear another word about Madison North. Hey, hey, if our mess is, is still hurting your marriage, then go. I'm serious. I won't ask you for another thing. Please go. Go to the kids. Go to Fusion. Just live your life. Is it true David Hayward blackmailed your wife to have a relationship with him? Yes. And that he forced you to hide your own child? 
Yes. And that when you and your wife wanted to renew your vows the night before the ceremony, you were arrested for brawling with Hayward. Yes. How did you feel about David Hayward? I hated him. And he hated me. Ask anyone. If I were to ask anyone, would anyone respond that they had heard you say you wished David Hayward was dead? I don't think you'd have a problem finding a witness telling you that at all. Thank you, Dr. Martin. No further questions. Redirect. So, these witnesses that the defense is referring to, the ones that could testify to your hatred for the deceased, many of them were at the party. Yeah, they were all at the party. You were at the party. Yes, and I remember seeing you very occupied that night. But if I were to question any one of these witnesses, could they say that you were absent long enough to, let's say, kill David Hayward? I don't know. Did you kill David Hayward? No, I didn't. No further questions. Before we continue, I'd like a sidebar with attorneys, please. If you're trying to make a break for it, I need to talk to Ryan. No, no. I thought the plan was to stay away from him so you wouldn't look guilty to the jurors. He and my father were talking. They're up to something, and I need to stop him. Okay, well, Greenlee, Greenlee, it could be anything, okay? I mean, what, what is it, something more than making him look guilty? I heard my father tell Ryan he wouldn't let him make a decision like that. Okay, right now, I think you need to focus on taking care of yourself. If it's anything close to what I'm thinking, I have to get to Ryan and stop him. Stealing from Palmer was your idea? Yep. Yeah. And JR and Annie didn't have a clue? I'm doing what I have to do. Throwing yourself in front of the firing squad for them? No. No, Marissa, I am not out to be a martyr. I stole those plans to impress Annie because I... I don't know, I just... I didn't think I was good enough the way I was. Not good enough for Annie? Do you know how crazy that sounds? <laughs> you are such a good person, Scott. No, no, I'm not. But I'm working on it. Be a man my father would be proud of. Stuart would be very proud of you. Thank you. You're not alone. That means a lot. I'll come visit. I'll send care packages. <laughs> of course you will. <laughs> I'm sorry, Marissa. I'm sorry you got caught up in all this mess. We never belonged to that house, did we? No, no, we didn't. <laughs> Another life we would have met somewhere far away from Chandler. A little town on a lake. Like the one in Stewart's painting, the one in the gatehouse. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Nice thought. If you need anything, I'm a lawyer now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you promised me one thing. Anything. You take care of that little boy. You were right to get AJ out of that house. He has a chance, but only if you give it to him. Marissa doesn't need your advice on how to raise my son. Our bank accounts are frozen. Credit cards, too? You were on the scene when the deceased collapsed? I was. What did you observe? David Hayward What's had been on? beaten, what are bruised. You because? Because he and Ryan Lavery had a fight. And you assumed that this was the cause of death? It was assumed. 
And uh, you arrested Ryan Lavery? He actually came forward, even though he couldn't remember the fight. I made the biggest mistake of my life the night of our wedding. I should never have let you get on that motorcycle, but I did. And I will never forgive myself for that. For that and, and for everything that you had to go through. I didn't save you that night. Let me save you now. David's gone. It was ruled that David Hayward died of a lethal dose of digitalis. The charges against Ryan Lavery were dropped, correct? Correct. There was nothing to link Ryan to the drug. Digitalis. A drug that a former heart surgeon could have kept in his home. A home that was shared by the defendant. I couldn't testify as to where the drug actually came from. No, I, I understand. But you did find a vial with traces of the digitalis. I did. Mm -hmm. Can you please tell the jury where you found this vial? In the defendant's car. Now, at one point, the police briefly entertained a suicide theory. Can you please tell the jury why? I found letters in David's room that suggested he might have killed himself. Letters that were later proven to be forgeries, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. And by your department's analysis, who forged the dead man's signature? The defendant. So, clearly this was designed to steer the investigation away from the real killer. Or to give the people left behind a little peace. Are you saying that um, Greenlee was so compassionate that she felt that um, it would be easier for the people left behind by writing these letters? It's possible. Well, then why did she write herself one? You'd have to ask her that yourself. <laughs> and, and these letters that were written, one to the estranged daughter of David Hayward and Amanda Martin, these people weren't exactly close to the defendant. Not particularly. So you're saying that... Mrs. Hayward risked introducing false evidence into a murder investigation just to make things a little easier for people that she wasn't even close with? Objection calls for speculation. Sustained. Do you think that suicide is still a possibility? Chief Hubbard. I don't think it's likely. And why is that? Because Dr. David Hayward enjoyed torturing people way too much to kill himself. Your witness. 